We are learning new information in Monday's deadly Amtrak derailment that killed three people in Washington state. Investigators are now looking into whether the train engineer was distracted at the time of that train hitting a 30 mile per hour zone going 80 miles per hour. Gotti Schwartz reports from DuPont, Washington. Twisted metal and crumpled cars, grim evidence of the forces that tore apart this commuter train and the lives of the 85 people on board. As accident investigators comb through the wreckage, new questions from survivors and families of the victims about what could have caused the derailment on the line's first official run. Everybody's going left and right, up and down, to wake up to looking at the seat on the opposite row in the air. I see people's legs underneath the car on the side of me, and it's just it was horrible. Nearly 100 people were taken to hospitals. At least three people were killed in the crash. NTSB investigators say they're working to recover additional data from the train's onboard cameras, but they've already learned from the black boxes that the train's brakes were tripped as it went 80 miles an hour into a 30 mile an hour curve. It looks like the emergency brake was automatically activated when the accident was occurring rather than being initiated by the engineer. Investigators also confirming that the safety system known as PTC designed to prevent such accidents hadn't been implemented on the new line. PTC is positive train control and it's an overlay system that allows the technology to communicate and enforce things such as speed restrictions. At least some of the crew had been doing practice runs for two weeks before the crash. Investigators say the engineer had done the route before. Under Amtrak policy, he couldn't operate the train unless he was qualified and familiar with this territory. But some communities along the route had long warned against the danger of running high-speed trains through the area. Warnings they say Amtrak did not heed. Gotti Schwartz, NBC News, DuPont, Washington. Exactly one month after the Georgia Dome down in Atlanta was imploded by a series of planned explosives, early this morning officials went in for round two. Last month, two sections of a wall withstood the blast, but the second time it worked and the building came tumbling down as planned today. In that whole second implosion, things sound familiar. Well, it probably should because it happened around here. The company in charge of the demolition, Adamo, which is a local company here, was also in charge of the Silver Domes explosion. It's not quite an exact science, I guess. The International Paralympic Committee says that it is maintaining its suspension of the Russian delegation. The decision announced today suspends all Russian athletes from the 2018 games because of problems with doping and Russian athletes in the past. Russian athletes will be able to compete as neutrals in qualification events across four winter sports, alpine skiing, biathlon, also cross-country skiing and snowboard.